It's Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. Before I start the video today, please make sure to like this video, share this video all over your social media, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. But without further ado, I wanna get right into what's happening. Printed out a few articles I wanna share with all of you. Please feel free uh, to give us your input in the comments down below. Uh, you are a very knowledgeable group of people and you have woken up so many people and truly have saved lives because you have people preparing now. They're not just listening to me, they're listening to you and people have woken up and they are preparing. But I want to start with this first article from CNBC today. Target's earnings take a huge hit as retailer sells off unwanted inventories. Get this now. Profits for Target fell nearly 90%, 90%. So they're slashing prices on all this inventory that they have, trying to clear it out. And you have to think for a second what we're going to see in the future. When we see Target right now slashing prices, Profits down nearly 90%. What type of sales do you think you're going to see <clears throat> in the future here when the everything bubble becomes the everything sale? This is just the beginning, but this is a really good example of how quick the sales can happen and how so many companies are going to get themselves in trouble. Households are going to get themselves in trouble, forced to sell cars and RVs and boats. They're going to be forced to sell their homes, their Rolex watches. We're going to see fire sales across the United States of America, uh, from corporate America down to the average household. So I, I thought that was really, really fascinating. And before I forget, I just looked at the two-year and 10-year uh, treasury yield, the uh, 10 year right now sitting at 2.9% and the two year sitting at almost 3.3%. So we have quite an inversion. So we've had two negative back to back quarters of negative GDP. We have this inversion of the two and 10, 10 year uh, treasury bonds. This is telling you and I forecasting that we're going to see trouble, ladies and gentlemen. And I know people don't want to admit that. They don't want to believe it. They want to hope it's going to go away. But we have a pretty good inversion continuing to go on here. And as we discuss more of this data, somebody please tell me how things are going to get better and when they're going to get better. I really hope that they get better. I would love to report great news. I would love to be producing a car channel, driving around uh, in, in a Ferrari, shooting videos at, at cars and coffee and having a great time. But I can't do that right now because there is so much on the line for the average American. Um, your future is in jeopardy right now. Uh, your financial future is in jeopardy right now. Fed sees interest rate hikes continuing until inflation eases substantially. Uh, this comes from the Fed minutes today. Uh, we're going to see more rate hikes coming. Now they're saying the next one in September is going to be 50 basis points, not 75 basis points. We'll see how that plays out. But uh, the Fed said that further rate hikes are ahead. Uh, 50 to 75 basis points, uh, that will be uh, data dependent. So they probably don't know yet. Uh, that next Fed meeting will be in September. We'll see how that plays out. Many people right now concerned about the Fed tightening and what kind of impact uh, this is going to have uh, on the U.S. economy if they continue uh, with these rate hikes. So I guess the answer, and, and you know who it really is, it's the markets, it's the, it's, it's the people in the markets, it's, it's corporate America heavily invested in the markets, right, that, that don't want these rate hikes. Nobody really wants these rate hikes, but unless you raise rates above the rate of inflation, we're going to continue to have inflation. And the average American is going to continue to watch their savings disappear, their purchasing power dissolve, and the price of everything going up. Uh, we really need to get aggressive here. And it, look, we're in a really bad situation here because if the Fed gets really aggressive, it is going to put the US economy not just in a recession, but in a depression. 
But if the Fed just does nothing, if they play both ends here, buying bonds and stocks at one end, raising rates 50 basis points at the other, way behind the rate of inflation, then the only one I see really getting hurt is the average consumer, the average American. Um, you cannot play both ends of this game. The Fed is going to have to pick what it wants to do, what direction it wants to do. Either it's going to pivot and uh, lower rates and continue to print more money, continue to buy bonds, continue to buy stocks, and we're going to have more massive inflation, or they're going to stop and get out of these markets, shrink this balance sheet for real, and begin to get aggressive with one, at least one full percentage point rate increases until they get ahead of this inflation. There are a lot of people out there that told you and I that the Fed would never raise rates. And here we are. We're going to get another one. I think they're going to raise all the way through 2022. We'll see what happens in 2023. We're going to see what they're made of. But if they reverse course, we are going to see real huge trouble. This will send a message to the world that they've lost control, that the U.S. dollar is going to be in big trouble. It's going to have less purchasing power than it does now. And you're going to see countries around the world dump dollars like you've never seen before. So to so those people out there that thought the Fed would never raise rates, I think you were wrong because they're going to continue to raise rates. Here's another one from CNBC. Mortgage demand fell last week even as rates declined, as mortgage rates declined, plus more inventory hitting the market. So uh, we had uh, rates at uh, 30-year fixed rate of 5.45%. The, the previous week it was, it was at 5.47%, and we have less people applying for mortgage. Uh, apps for mortgages to purchase a home dropped 1% for the week, 18% lower than the same week a year ago. You are watching the cool down of this housing market. And when this housing market goes, it's going to be game over. Uh, they can, can do all they want uh, to try and control the stock market. Uh, but the stock market is so far detached from the real economy, uh, and, and all of you know that, but they're going to have a very hard time controlling the housing market. Unless they can get rates back down under 3%, uh, they're going to have big trouble. And the other problem they're going to have is layoffs. So many people losing their jobs, and we're watching those weekly jobless claims pile up every week, and it's going to continue to be a problem. Layoffs are going to be a big problem because if people don't have a job, they can't get a loan, and they can't afford to make a mortgage payment. Also, inflation going to continue to be a big problem. Uh, so you're going to have fewer and fewer qualified buyers in the housing market. So I see big, big trouble coming to housing. U.S. housing starts fall. Fall, 9.6% in July. Miss expectations, another bad sign. Now, this was a really interesting article. If you get a, a couple minutes, check it out. It's on the hedge today. 72% of millennials have regrets about homes they overpaid or settled for in 2021 and 2022. And I'll just paraphrase a little bit through this article. 70% uh, of buyers in 2020 and 2021 bought a home for the first time. Nearly one in four were not satisfied with their home buying experience. Well, of course, because they overpaid the FOMO. 31% paid over asking price. The medium amount over the listing price was $65,000. Think about that. These people paid, on average, $65,000 over asking price. 80% made more than one offer. 36% made an offer sight unseen. Think We're going to look back um, one day, maybe... 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, maybe a year from now. But we're all going to look back and we're going to go, what in the world were these people thinking? Paying these astronomical amounts over the listing price, buying something for, you know, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars and just settling, not even liking what they were buying, just settling for it because of the FOMO. People have been so bamboozled, so fooled by the television by the real estate agents, uh, just by all of this garbage uh, that they're watching uh, day in and day out on the television, telling them that they, they better buy and listening to their friends. Uh, incredible. 20% settled for a home in a worse location. 
Think about you're paying beyond topped out. You'd be, you're paying beyond the bubble to live where you don't even want to live, to buy a house you don't even like. 30% say they spent too much money. 72% have regrets with the home they purchased. One in 10 paid cash, but 29% of those buyers had to withdraw money from their savings. 27% borrowed from their investments. There is nobody out there that can tell me we're not going to see big trouble in housing. Uh, it's great that people had better credit, uh, the banks were more strict, but you, you know, today people have a lot more tools to fix their credit, to build their credit up, and they were able to do that now uh, with all of these apps online and all of the tools. Uh, but again, many people today only put down 3%. Four or five percent, or even less. Now we're seeing adjustable rate mortgages back out there. So a lot of people don't have a lot of skin in the game, and people believe that they're rich, they're house rich right now because their house went up a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. The the house they bought for four hundred now is worth six hundred or seven hundred, and they're house rich. And they overpaid in this massive bubble, and they're going to watch all this artificial equity vanish. And on top of that, many people pulled cash out of these homes. It is going to be such a disaster. And we're going to see sales again, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that we cannot even compare what we're going to see to 2008. I think it is going to be much more similar to 1929. I, I don't even think you can compare this to 2008. There is just way too much debt out there. Uh, when you have people stay home for over a year, and pay them and pump in five or six trillion dollars uh, into the economy over 24 months, uh, think about the catastrophic damage uh, you, you have done to the economy and the fragmentation now we're going to see for years. And let's not forget this, this um, new uh, stimulus uh, bill that just got passed, the Inflation Act. Uh, it, it, it's going to be incredible. We're not going to see that inflation hit till next year, uh, it's just absolutely incredible. We're going to print so much money. Um, it, you must be preparing, ladies and gentlemen. You must be critically thinking for yourself now. This system is going to be in big trouble. It's in big trouble right now, and the smart money knows it. Retirement accounts take hit with inflation, but investors stay the course. This is on Fox Business today. Get this. 401ks. 401ks are down 20% from the same period last year. You know, when this market really crashes, uh, People's 401ks are going to be absolutely decimated. They're down right now 20% uh, from last year. If you're an older individual and you're reliant on this money, and we have a real, real serious hit uh, in these markets, let's say we see the markets go down 50%, you've already lost 20%. Uh, people are going to walk away with literally nothing. And on top of that, inflation is eating up their 401ks. Uh, but this is, this is going to be really, really disastrous, especially for older people who are not going to have time to ride it out and stay the course, as, as it says. They're not going to have that kind of time. And even if you're younger, uh, how long is it going to take to come back this time? I mean, we have, we have so much damage now in the system. Uh, it took, what, about 25 years for the markets to come back after 1929. And I know everybody says it's different this time. Yes, it will be different this time because it's going to be worse because there's too much debt in the system. There's too much money printing. There's too much spending. The dollar is on its last leg. The, the dollar now ha has lost 97% of its purchasing power. But People will say, oh, it's strong, it's strong, uh, because the dollar index is comparing the U.S. dollar to all the other sick puppies in the litter. The dollar is on borrowed time. Retail sales, little change in July amid fall in gas prices and drop in auto sales. This is on CNBC today. You're paying 10 to 20% more today to get the same or less. So... When you go out to eat, you're paying 10 or 20% more than you were last year, and you're getting the same portion or less. More than likely, you're getting less, and you're getting less quality. You go to the grocery store, you're getting less 
and you're getting less quality. You're getting less service. Um, we're in a definitely a new world because when I see restaurants closing at eight o'clock, when I see retailers closing at six o'clock, uh, something is really, really different. When I go by an auto dealership and there's no new cars out there, where are all the cars at? What is going on? This does not look like the same place as it was a couple years ago. We, we still cannot get uh, airplanes to take off the ground. Um, I see countless numbers of vacant buildings more and more. I think that the restaurant industry and the small business owner is going to be in survival mode uh, this year and next year, just barely hanging on right now. Uh, so much com vacant commercial real estate. Um, all these banks holding notes uh, on, on these huge office buildings, uh, these huge, huge shopping centers, um, bond holders. Uh, how long can they go on without anybody paying on these buildings? What is eventually going to happen? Uh, it's just a very, very strange place. But you would think that we're being told every day that we have 3.5% unemployment, the economy's roaring back, uh, everything looks great, there's no recession, then why in the world is retail not booming? And we know that people have been using their credit cards now uh, to shop so they, they can buy the same amount, pay 20, 10 to 20% more, and use money they don't have by using plastic. Uh, this is very, very dangerous. And I know that there's people out there that say everything's great. I see the comments. There's always a handful of people that say that, that you know, this is uh, very gloomy, that everything's fine. Uh, we're going to get past this. Nothing to worry about. Don't be negative. Uh, the economy's doing just fine. Uh, I completely disagree. If, if you would please, I mean, you, you know, you have uh, all the right in the world to say whatever you want as long as it's not condescending and attacking somebody personally. Uh, but if you're going to make a comment like that, please let us know. And, and look, maybe I'm wrong. Where's the economy really doing well? I, I would love to know. Tell us where the economy is booming, where the economy is healthy. And um, I, would love to, I would love to know the answer to that. And maybe there are some areas in the economy that are just booming and we don't know about it. But if you're going to come out and say the economy is good, let us know where the economy is good. Is it in the auto sector? Is it in housing? Is it in commercial real estate? Uh, is, it in, is, is it in manufacturing? Is it in shipping? Um, chip production? Where is it good? Construction? Where? Please share with us where it is good. I love to look at the data. I love to look at facts. And here's another fact. Student loan repayment is set to resume in two weeks. Experts believe that the freeze will remain. Uh, it says here uh, on CNBC, it's frustrating and stressful. 40 million people are in the dark whether or not student loan payments will resume. Uh, whether they resume or not, how about this? I've got a great idea for everybody. How about getting a job? We're told that there's 11.1 million jobs out there. I don't know if that's true, but I see a lot of uh, uh, job uh, signs in the window uh, for cooks and fast food and restaurants and bartenders and service sector jobs, a lot of you know um, hiring signs at these establishments. And you know, they're paying $17, $20 an hour. Uh, look, you went and got a degree. You made a commitment to pay the money back. Instead of sitting um, at your parents' home, doing nothing, producing nothing, uh, how about going and getting one of these service sector jobs and just paying your debt back instead of having the rest of us pay it back for you? Uh, see, I just don't believe it's fair to the people who went to school and already paid their debt back because they worked a couple side hustles uh, or they worked extra hours after they got out of college and got a job, took their degree, got a job, worked really hard and paid their debts back and it took many, many years and a lot of hours and God bless them, they did it. Why should these people not be on the hook for the obligation, obligation and commitments that they made? Why should we be on the hook for that? There's 11.1 million jobs out there, mostly service sector, mostly part-time, I get it. But you could take one of those jobs right now, or you may be working with your degree somewhere right now, but you could go work part-time 
get a side hustle, use that money, and pay this college tuition debt off. I, I just hate when people just think they shouldn't have to pay it off. Why shouldn't you have to pay it off? If you go and sign for a car or a house, you signed on the dotted line. You um, committed to paying this debt down. You made a commitment. You gave your word. Uh, I, I just think that this is going to be terrible and it's going to set a terrible precedent uh, for the future where people can just, you, you know, uh, sign their name, uh, commit to something and just say, Man, I'm not going to pay it. I'm going to have the government pay for it. So I, I really hope that um, they don't put the American people on the hook for all this debt. These 40 million people could go get one of these 11 million jobs right now and start paying this debt down. Amazon hiking third party seller fulfillment fees for holiday season. Yesterday, we were talking about uh, right out here in San Bernardino, a uh, bunch of workers walked off the job at, at, at an Amazon hub. They were getting paid $17 an hour. They want $22 an hour. And, you know, some people uh, came at me because they said, JB, you know, these people should make $22 an hour. They, they've, got to, they've got to live. They've got bills to pay. And I understand that. And, and I want everybody to make a good living. But see, what happens is when you start raising uh, the, these amounts on jobs like this or the minimum wage. This is why when you go to a fast food restaurant, now it's $15 for lunch. Now they're going to hike uh, third-party seller fulfillment fees. Uh, you know, everything at Amazon will get more expensive because they're going to tag it on to you. And yes, I want everybody to make a living. I want everybody to be able to eat. I want everybody to uh, pay their light bill, of course. But these jobs, these warehouse jobs like this, uh, fast food jobs, service sector jobs, working at a coffee house, working at a bar, working at a hotel, uh, these were not career jobs. And now we're turning these into career jobs and paying people career wages for a service sector job. So if you're, if you're under the mindset that, well, let's pay everybody $22 to work at a warehouse, well, why not just make it $32 an hour? And why don't we just like make it $42 an hour? Why don't we pay these people the same amount that maybe a doctor makes or a lawyer makes or you know some white collar professional? And then people say, well, look at CEOs make this much or that much. Uh, well, okay. Uh, that's, a, you know, that's a great point. But the CEO represents millions or billions of dollars and his shareholders. And if his shareholders are willing to pay him $20 million a year, that's what they're willing to pay. But we're all going to be paying more just to have a package delivered from Amazon, more for a cheeseburger at a hamburger joint, more for a milkshake, more wherever you go, because everybody's going to want to make $25 and $30 an hour working in service sector jobs, which are not career jobs. These were intended as part-time jobs, uh, intended for retirees, intended for, for high school kids or, or college kids working part-time to pay for those degrees. Uh, these were not intended to be career jobs. And now, People are, are going into these jobs believing that these are careers now, believing that they should get $25 or $30 an hour to load a truck or to uh, load up a warehouse. Again, I want everybody to make money. I want everybody to live comfortably. But uh, instead of you know um, hiking the hourly wage every year, uh, how about we stop spending as a country? How about we stop printing so much money so we don't have so much inflation so that maybe the money that you do make actually has purchasing power? When gas isn't five or six or seven dollars an hour, people don't need to make $25 an hour at a warehouse. But uh, you know, we could argue this all day and I know I'm ranting, but where, where does the dollar end? Where does this all stop? I mean, why don't we just pay everybody $75 an hour? I mean, Again, these are service sector jobs, and they have huge implications for people that use these services, uh, go to these resorts, go to these restaurants. Uh, this is going to impact everybody because we're paying cheap, um, this not cheap labor, but this uneducated, unskilled type labor, uh, the price that we would pay skilled labor. So, and look, I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm not here to, you know, 
say that I don't want you to make money. So please let me be clear. I, I really wish that there were there was other real opportunity where people had real jobs like producing, manufacturing. I wish that, th that we weren't spending more money than we were taking in as a country. I wish we didn't have these huge deficits. I wish they would stop with the printing presses. Uh, the problem is we don't have purchasing power now. So the answer is just keep paying people more and more money so the whole facade can continue to go on. At some point, you know, when people are making $100 an hour and a tank of gas is two hundred dollars it doesn't you know it just doesn't make any sense this we cannot just keep raising the the hourly wage to keep up with all this inflation we got to stop spending and we got to stop printing so i'm going to leave it there today god bless every one of you feel free to comment down below let me know your thoughts uh, what's happening in your areas as far as your local economies the job markets i'm seeing a lot more layoffs have people contacting me daily about themselves either being laid off, their friends being laid off, family members being laid off, and people are getting themselves in really serious bad financial situations. And uh, this thing is going to come to a head, ladies and gentlemen, and I pray to God every one of you stays on path, continues to prepare, do not get complacent. Um, we're going to see some pretty amazing things happening uh, in this country, I, I believe. Um, uh, a lot of it is going to be financial and it is going to uh, spill over socially. So be prepared and uh, be safe out there. And God bless all of you. And I look forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon.